What's up guys? I don't really know what I'm doing today. I mean like more so today than any other day in my life, but it's because I have encountered a makeup format that I have literally never seen before. These are multi-chromatic makeup flakes from the brand Beauty Bar Baby. I followed them on Instagram, saw that they launched them probably a little over a week ago at this point, and given my love of multi-chromatic makeup and my lack of self-control, I bought not one, but five shades. So I figured I would swatch them here for you today in case you were curious about them. And then I also wanted to play with some application formats because I'll be really honest, when I first opened these up, I was a little puzzled about how to apply. They have some tips written out on the website on the product pages for these, but once you actually see and touch the the product itself. All makeup logic for me anyway kind of flew out the window. So I have been playing a little bit with them. I use one of these shades as a liner and I'll show you the clip of me doing that when it's more relevant. But I wanted to play around with them a little bit more, go more in depth with the various ways that you can or get various ways that it's best to apply these, that I think it's easiest to apply these, and do it real time so we could learn it all, you know, together. So let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> let's start with the good stuff, the swatches, right? First shade I have up here is the shade Calypso and this this actually reminds me a lot of the first product I ever bought from Beauty Bar Baby, which was a multi-chromatic loose pigment. This is the shade Avada, mm, Abracadabra, almost had a magical situation on our hands. Abracadabra, and I have a whole video um, talking about and swatching this and the other shade I got, which is Hocus Pocus. These were maybe the first multi-chrome eyeshadows I ever bought, and so they definitely have a special place in my heart for that reason, and I've been following Beauty Bar Baby on Instagram ever since. And like I said, Calypso's pretty similar to Abracadabra. Cadabra both have purpley bases with strong blue teal shifts to them. The major difference I see is with Calypso, because of the texture of these flakes, they have an iridescent component to them, unlike the multi-chrome powders. And so with the flakes, Calypso, you get kind of a light lime green almost at some angle. So there's even more dimension to these and maybe even like a soft yellow. It's These are the weirdest things. They're so cool. So that is the shade Calypso. Then, ugh, talk about a makeup tragedy. The shade Bellatrix. I have already managed to drop. Let's have a moment of silence. Please don't think I did not try to actually physically pick up the flakes with my fingers and drop it back into this pot because I am not above that. It's just physically impossible because of the way these stick to your fingers. So I still have plenty in here, plenty to play with it for today, but Bellatrix is this really pretty kind of a soft pink base with a strong bright green shift that also has hints of teal and like soft lavender to it and like maybe even some fiery oranges. All of these are just so hard to describe because they it looks like every color in the rainbow is in the jar and yet all of these are very distinctly different. The next shade is Urania, which is a beautiful like bold grapey purple with strong primary blue shifts to it. Unlike Calypso, which has a little bit more of a subdued purple base and stronger teal shifts. Urania is like bold, bold, in your face, purple blue. Next up, Ursa, a beautiful like fiery peach with soft pinks and yellows and greens to it. Primarily yellow, I would say, that then turns into the electric peach and lime green. And last up is Galactic Halo because it looks like a soft frosty white that then has subtle hints of iridescent pink and green soft blues and lilacs, like really doesn't look like it has much of any kind of color in the pot but when you apply it and you, you know, kind of shift your head as you're looking in the mirror, you see all sorts of different colors really pop out. And I think this is going to be a great shade for anyone who's not super comfortable wearing a lot of bold in your face sort of colors or textures, because at some angles, it literally looks like you're not wearing anything on the lid. And then at others, all of a sudden, it's like, holy texture. You got a rainbow across your lid and you didn't have to do a whole lot of work to get it. It's just so beautiful and eye-catching. This is actually the shade that I've already played around with using as a liner. The first way I thought would be easiest to get to playing with these is to use a liquid mixing medium. And I just bought the Esam Pro Mixing Medium in the Muse Beauty sale. So I got this. I also got a little palette to mix it on, but honestly, in the past, I have mixed it on mirrors, the tops of pat like eyeshadow palettes. I just clean it off and then I put a little drop of this and I took an eyeliner brush. The brush that I used is the Esam W01, really great for de detailed liner work. And I would dip it into the liquid a little bit. Then I would dip it straight into the pot here and the flakies just 
they like suction right to any sort of liquid that you have on your brush and from there I would place it right on my lash line and for the most part they did a really good job at transferring there there wasn't a whole lot left on my brush and they didn't get crushed in the process I thought for sure just the way that when I initially stuck my hand into these flakies they crumbled immediately and so I thought well these might just come off as more of a pigment on the eyes but no the flakes stay intact if you use it with a mixing medium just like that so they ultimately ended up creating more of a chunky sort of foiled look across my eye but they weren't too hard to work with like I feel like I could still get a pretty clean wing shape and of course it's hard to see because these are kind of transparent at some angles but like I said I think it created a pretty clean line shape and I didn't have to work too hard to get it okay so now this time around I want to play with something super bold and I want to try using a glitter primer instead of a liquid mixing medium because I feel like a lot more people either already have some sort of sticky base glitter primer around and they just find it a little bit less intimidating to start working with over a liquid so here I have NYX's glitter primer and I'm gonna go in with a shade Urania I think I might do two different shades on each eye and then clean it off and then go create a shadow look and apply it over top so we can see how it performs over those. So to play with the glitter primer, I'm gonna use a smooth flat brush to apply it directly to my lid. This is an Esam T41. And the reason I, I wanna do it, start doing it this way anyway, is because I'm going to try applying this directly with my fingers. And the major issue that I had with that when I very first tried swatching these, when I first opened them up, is that they really want to stick to your finger. It was almost impossible to have it transfer to like the back of my hand or wherever I was trying to swatch them. So my tactic here is going to be to apply this in, you know, basically the exact shape that I want this on my lid. That way it creates the shape for me. I'm just gonna stick my finger in the jar to pick up product and then press it onto my lid. And in theory, the product will only stick where I have placed this primer. I'm not so sure about the blending logistics, how I'm gonna, you know, not get any harsh edges here, but you know, we're flying by the seat of our pants. We'll see how it works out. Okay, we're zoomed in so you can see more of what's going on and the shadow or the base has now gotten pretty tacky. So I'm gonna go in, like I said, with my, ooh. Another thing, important thing to mention as I say this, I don't know if the camera's picking any of this up, but I just accidentally like breathed heavily around this jar. It, it is, it is, I mean, I am, I am covered in it. I don't know if you can see that. So just be very, very careful. So I'm gonna take my middle finger, picking a little bit of that up. I got a little bit of a clump. I'm gonna start with that much here. Do my best not to spill this jar. And now, very carefully, I'm going to press that. Ooh, that stuck nicely. Okay, that stuck really nicely. Okay, I'm getting lots of chunks here. This overall, very messy. It is a very messy medium to work with. However, I don't think I have any other products in my collection that look like that on my eye. It's truly unique in the effect that it gives your makeup. And obviously this is not without fallout. This is very much producing quite a bit of fallout. And I even kind of like the way this is dispersing itself out over here on this end of things. I, I don't hate that. Okay, so that is pretty much where I want it. Like I said, I actually don't hate the barrier that I have going on here in terms of blending. I think that was the way to go was to apply a primer using a brush so I could get the glitter to stick exactly where I wanted it. Now, a challenge will be wiping these flakes away without absolutely... Oh, that's actually not bad. Unlike, interesting, so unlike a pigment, these flakies will not totally ruin your makeup when you're trying to clean them um, out as fallout under your eye area. So often pigment, you'll try and brush it away and it will just streak and give you like major dark under eye circles when you try that. But this, not so much. The flakes just really clear away nicely. Okay, now on my other eye, I wanna try using my CoverGirl Lid Lockup because I feel like this is a primer that more people might keep on hand for everyday use in addition to like glitter adhesion or flaky adhesion, I guess. It's a really sticky primer, which is why I personally love it. It's one of my favorite primers ever when I'm looking for ultra long wear. It's not very opaque, so I wouldn't count on it canceling out any sort of, 
you know, discoloration or pigment you might have, like a paint pot, but it's very tacky. So you can see I just applied that directly to my lid, using my finger to blend that out here. We can see what a uh, brush application looks like versus a finger application. The only um, challenge I see with this though is that this has a drying period. So I kind of need to work fast. Now I think on this eye, I wanna go in with the shade, oh, poor Bellatrix. I wanna go with the shade Bellatrix once again. I'm gonna open this very carefully because I can't afford to lose much more of her. Don't breathe. So once again, taking my middle finger and I'm just going to pat that. Ooh, she comes off lighter on the lid than I would have thought, really pulling green, but I love it. Wow, this almost looks a little bit like Galactic Halo, that light, almost see-through iridescent that I last swatched but just with a yellow base instead of a clear base. That is so beautiful. And I'll say I'm pretty pleased with how that the CoverGirl primer is gripping onto this. Like there is a little bit more left on this finger as opposed to this one over here. But as far as sticky bases, I mean, I think it proves you don't need a glitter glue in order to get these to work. Okay, and because that is so light, I am, I just went back in with a little bit more of that primer, kind of repriming the lid because I wanna see what the shade Ursa is like. Maybe it's a little bit more pigmented on the lid. So here I go again, picking a little bit of, oh yes, it's so beautiful, and pressing it. Oh, that is fiery. This reminds me a lot of the glitter actually in the center pan of the ColourPop Aha uh -huh Honey palette, which is not eye safe. And I did not realize when I used it on my eye. So in case you were looking for that shade, but in a format that is actually safe for the eye area, I would have to say this is it. And again, looks very like kind of nothing on the lid unless you are looking at it from certain angles. So this is another one where if you're just wanting to dip your toe into multi-chromes, glitters, flaky things, I guess, this would be a good one to, to do it with. If you're wearing it over a bare lid, it doesn't look like much, but if you're, you know, put it over a, a beautiful smoky eye, it probably really pops in the center of the lid. So that is gorgeous. Okay, so speaking of smoky eye, I am now going to remove these, do a super quick smoky shadow look, and then try and layer these over that. And we're back. Took a couple shades from the Viseart Milieu palette, picked some brown tones, slapped those on my lid. Now let's go in. I'm gonna go back in with that NYX glitter base. I'm just gonna use my finger this time to pat that on the center of my lid. You can see it really doesn't disturb that shadow base underneath. Now, I'm gonna go in with the shade, the only one I haven't used so far on my lids, which is Calypso. This is kind of the lighter purpley teal combination. Taking again. Um, this time I actually used, this was probably a mistake. I used the finger that I just pat the primer onto my lid with, so this could really go either way. I'm just going to pat that down. And it looks more teal on the lid than purple. But I really love the finish. Like even, even when I work with it like this, it still retains a flaky look as opposed to a pigment look, which I really like. It just keeps it looking really unique. So now let's do the other eye. And this time I'm gonna be smart and use my index finger to blend that primer out. So it's interesting, I don't know if this is showing in the camera, but it feels like my right eye is more intense than my left, and maybe that's because I had the primer on the finger that picked up the pigment. It picked up way more, and so that's the payoff, or the difference in payoff you're seeing here. So I feel like I'm having to layer it quite a bit more to get a similar effect as over here. But overall, how gorgeous, right? Love that. And once again, I'm gonna see how easy this is to swipe away with a brush. This one is less easy to swipe away, something to note. And here we are, zoomed out, look is complete. I cleaned up my under eye area and applied a little bit of mascara. Now let's talk final thoughts. So I really like these. I think it's a super cool texture. Might not be for everyone. They are a little bit messy. So anyone who isn't really a fan of loose pigments to begin with might find these even more of an inconvenience when it comes to mess 
factor, but if you're looking for a really cool new texture to play with, these are pretty neat and you don't have to go big and bold. You can go with quite a few shades now, as we discovered, that look like a hint of something at some angles and then really pop at others, but they're a little bit less in your face than something like a bold multi-chromatic shade. So I do love that about these as well. And you can use as much as you want to change up a look, whether it's a lot all over the lid like I've done today or a little on your inner corner as a liner, just a dab in the set, the very, very center of your lid. I think these present some really fun opportunities if you like to play with some fun colors and textures in your makeup. Just be sure to A, not drop them, B, don't breathe near them at all. I am an absolute mess right now, but a mess with some pretty good looking eyeshadow. So there's that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye guys.